day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed part A for what we did uh, on 10th of May. And just in case y'all didn't get part of that message, it's the, it was, I hope you all had a happy Mother's Day for the ladies out there. <laughs> and what we're focusing on in, in, in part A, and now this is part B, is that we want to have a personal relationship with God. I, I don't know if that could be a redundant and you're hearing it over, but that's what it is. Faith comes back hearing anyway, right? Is that we want to, we need to have a personal relationship with God. We need to understand that He wants to know you and He wants to call you by your name. In other words, the paradigm that Chris talks about is the fact is that we collectively are the church. Not the walls, not the building, but us. Not denominations, not political parties, but each of us who have received Jesus Christ as the personal Lord and Savior are the body of Christ, the church. And in the church, he knows you individually. Because one of the scriptures we talked about, the fact is that even the very number of hairs on your head, and I put in the fact I ain't got that many, but the fact is that he knows you so well, that you are so valuable to him, that he knows the, the number of hairs on the top of your head. Meaning he's saying is that, you are special to me. You individually are special to me. We can put it in fact there's on the Mother's Day, one of the scriptures toward the end, we we're talking about Mary Magdalene, uh, who went to the tomb. Uh, and and when, when the body of Jesus was not in the tomb, she looked at Jesus and thought he was a gardener and was asking him, where did you put his body? And when Jesus said her name, the light came on. Because that made it special, that made it unique. When he calls most of the people you see in the Bible, when they said their names, I mean, that's, that's something God says, I know that person. Huh? God knows you, he knows you. That's what you want to know. You want to get to understand he knows you by your name. That's very important because it's a personal relationship. We talk it, we heard it, but do we really understand that there's a personal relationship between you and God individually and with us all collectively? It's unfortunate, and I hope most of you are still staying safe and practicing as much as that social distancing. I hope you're putting on your mask, not for it to protect you, but to protect somebody else. Show love when you put on that mask. Dude, the thing is that what has happened right now, we're in this condition, and who knows how long it's going to last. But right now, we're not, we're not in the buildings. We're at home. We're listening through media, the word of God being preached and the praising of God. We're hearing it in the media. We're doing it in our own homes. We're praying in our own homes. We're spending time in the word in our own homes. We're sitting there praying and believing and worshiping, praising God alone or in a family because we're developing the part we said in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering being conformable to unto death, his death. The thing is that he, we're in fellowship with him and there's a personal relationship and the fact is that we live by faith in him. His faith does not mean you don't do nothing. Faith means my confidence is that the things that I do, he is with me and he is going to bring me through. That's living by faith and by having a personal relationship. See, some of you know me. Some of you, some of you know me from, a, from the past when I was young and, and when I was when I was back in Hopewell and, 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 and they all back in college and, and the fact is that you, you got to know me and I got to know you and the thing is that God, Jesus Christ, the day we received him was the beginning of a relationship of knowing him and having faith that he will bring us through our wilderness and our tests. Getting to the point where we put our trust. You know, somebody, one of the people put in the tape and said is, why would you run to a building to hear from he that's in you? Listen to what he just said. In other words, when you go to church, the building, you bring Christ with you because he's in you. When you leave the building, he is in you. When you go through your storms in life, he is with you. When you're dealing with, even with this pestilence we're dealing with right now, he is with you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world and he knows your name. So what I want to say is that you live by faith. And you want to have that personal relationship to listen to him. Because I'm going to tell you something. I listen to, to listen to somebody else. Or to listen to myself. But let's talk about some of you got the point where I got to listen. I got to go run and, and get and hear from somebody else. And the fact is that I don't have, and you don't have, and we both don't have faith in ourselves and other people. I hope we don't have faith in mankind. I hope we don't. Because you're going to be disappointed. And I know you don't have faith in yourself because I know you've been disappointed in yourself. But I know you've been disappointed in your fellow man too. When it comes down to the things that happens in life and when you come in the storms and you're on a foundation on the rock of Christ or if you're on a foundation of the sand of dealing with people and trusting in people and hoping that people are going to do it. When you put your trust in a party, when you put yourself, put your trust in people. Oh, your own ability. We talk about the fact is sometimes, and I'll wrap it up with this, sometimes, many times, God allows things that happen to direct us to where he wants us to go. Because sometimes we go off in the wrong course, wrong direction, not hearing, not listening. So we go on a different tangent. But God is saying this, I'm going to let some things happen because if you, if you, if I, if I don't let it happen, you're going to keep going off on the wrong course. One of the things that we talked about here last week, count it all joy when you go into trials and tribulations, because the fact is you go into a trial, that means that there's, 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 you're ready to take a test. And in that test, when you come through that test with him, you're coming out with victory. People should say, what kind of victory? Victory is to get through. Huh? The victim not always to say, I want, I, I got what I wanted. No, you're going to get what he wants in your life. And when you start realizing what he wants in your life, you find out that's a blessing. So, you live by faith. You learn to hear from him. He knows your name. And God is going to bring us through. So, trust in him. If you want to trust in people, you do that. But I'm saying trust in him. Because he knows your name. Some people forget your name. He won't. Some people leave you, forsake you. 
you want. Amen. All right. I hope you enjoy this part B. And there's some more on part. There's a part C, part D, and an E. And because I broke it down by 30 minutes, you know, we're in the talk and the fellowship. And also, I welcome if you want to come and join us. I put the, uh, uh, we're, we got Zoom and I put the uh, number on there. You can you can come in at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock uh, to join us and participate in the discussion. If you got a word from God that you want us to hear, you go ahead and do that. Just remember, you, you we want you to pray the word, all right? But you're welcome to do it. All right, so remember, he knows your name, and you live by faith, trusting in him, because he's always going to be with you. Thank you. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Here's a question we have to answer ourselves. Now, ultimately, I believe that that God has to allow some things to redirect us. Okay, if we're on the wrong road, if we're on the wrong path, Unless something happens that causes us to recognize we're on the wrong road, we're on the wrong path, we will continue on that path. Absolutely. If that path is headed to the end, it's headed for destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, but, but the pandemic itself will never change a man's treasure. But wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Mm -hmm. So just because you get isolated doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to turn to God. Mm -mm. If you get isolated, all you're going to do is find other ways to indulge yourself in that which you find great joy and pleasure in. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Yeah. So, so I, I'm, not expecting, I'm not expecting people to... I'm not expecting people. Johnson quoted the verse about people who are called by my name. The critical part of that whole text is repentance. Hmm. If they will turn. turn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From their wicked way. Hey. Now, in this case, it was the wicked way that caused them to be in the situation that they were in. Amen. You, you follow? Right. So, so, if we just draw that simple, if we can get nothing else out of this, there needs to be some, some reconsideration, some serious reconsideration, some heart in here. What have I been doing? Mm -hmm. What was I doing before mm -hmm. the pandemic started? Mm -hmm. And what do I need to change so when I come out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I'll go back to what I was already doing? Mm -hmm. Right. You follow? Yeah. Now, uh, I am convinced that this comes down to one thing. Uh, I, I, I will first of all confess myself that um, 90 percent of people, no, 97 percent of what we've been taught from Scripture regarding the kingdom is Jack Phil. It's Jack Phil. And if you if you took some time out while this thing was going on and did some real serious searching in scripture, you begin to realize there ain't no way in the world we can ever get the results of scripture doing what we do. Amen. That's what you do. It word. is impossible that any sign should follow yeah. us other than the sign that's already following us. It is impossible we can, we can get biblical signs. We don't understand when God said the just shall live by faith. Well, see, we don't understand what he means. We think faith is an event. I, I, I was doing some, I, I've been looking at the thing, faith. Do you realize that faith in itself, the act of faith, that God has designed faith itself to be the very core of humility? Hmm. Faith say, God, God is saying, if you as a fallen creature who walked away from me and told me, basically what Adam and Eve said is that we don't need you. 
Wow. Okay. We can we can we can know some things of ourselves. God says, okay, go see what you can do. But get out of here, but go see what you can do. So they get out and they find out all the way down to the to the last soul that will ever be born that we can't we can know things, but we can only know things on the natural plane. We cannot know a spiritual thing without God. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's real. So God says, okay, if you want to come back to me, you have to humble yourself. So if you do a study on the word humble, or the word contrite, or the word broken, or the word sorrowful, or the word poor in spirit, anything where all of a sudden that which is high has been brought low, you'll find that God is always right there. Wow. Anybody that humbles themselves, anybody that's always contrite because they see their pitiful condition, anybody who Jesus said in Matthew 5, blessed are the poor in spirit. Yeah. They know they ain't got nothing. Come on. Come on. <laughs> they know. Listen, when it comes down to your spiritualism, we're the folks under the bridge. We're the folks sleeping on the street. We're the folks digging in trash cans spiritually. When we embrace that, God says, I can deal with you. I can deal with you. <laughs> Prayer says, I need God to do something because I can. Wow. Mm -hmm. Have faith in God. <laughs> Woo. I don't need God to do something in my marriage and my finances. I need God doing something all the time. In all my the life. time. <laughs> my whole life is born out of my trust in God. Come on. You see, we don't understand that. And so we got people running around there thinking that faith is, is, is that when you have this sickness or this have this disease. See, if you wasn't trusting God for the pandemic you got here, you're in trouble. Woo! <laughs> you follow me? So faith becomes, and then the scripture said, without it, we can't please God. Yeah. Without faith. So faith causes you to come back to God, not, not perceiving you, that you're equal with God, but come back to God like the prodigal son and said, I ain't worthy. I ain't worthy. <laughs> I, I ain't even worthy. You know what Abraham said to God when God was talking to him about Solomon Gomorrah? He said, look at God, I know I'm nothing but dust and ashes. Woo! That's how Abraham saw himself in relationship to God. I'm but dust and ashes. Yes, sir. So when you give a God, you better have that kind of mindset. You yes, better sir. have a low take on God. And so the scripture said he that dissolved himself shall be a baby. But he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Come on now. We come to the place where we realize, God, I'm created for you. I, I, I'm the cup with nothing in it. I was designed to be filled with God. It is only then that I can find my purpose, I can find wholeness, I can find meaning, I can find direction, I can find satisfaction. All of that depends on we were designed to be filled with God. Yes, sir. So faith is the foundational thing whereby you do the first thing that God requires and that is that you humble yourself before God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think that goes with Chris talking about this. Uh, the paradigm, Chris, was some people run to the church building when they had needs. They, 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 now the paradigm is, oh, you can't run to the church because the church ain't open. The four buildings are not open. Or the four walls are not open. But, but, but you can run to me because I'm still here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes very individual. And see, once once see, once you get that simple hook in place, once you understand that you are supposed to live your life in absolute and total dependence upon God. Amen. Yeah. You know, it, it goes uh, with, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves in the next slide, uh, but uh, in Matthew's, um, after Jesus had spoke, you know, about uh, building your ha your house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stone and, and, and sand. But at the end of that, where it talks about the authority of Jesus, it says, and it came to pass, this is verse, uh, this is Matthew 7, 28, says, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, 
the people were astonished at his doctrine. Mm. <laughs> For he taught them as one having authority. Yes. And not as the scribes, which is the secretaries, yeah. basically. Yeah. So uh, they've been taught by secretaries. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. They haven't. They have Ooh. not gone to the person who has the authority. Uh -huh. They don't have a relationship with the one with authority. They have a relationship with the scribes. D, why do you need to go back to a building to get in touch with the one who's living inside of you? Because they're taught that. They're, they're, they're taught everything happens in that building. Go out and get some folks to be saved and bring them to the building to get saved. Woo. Go out and find Woo. a sick, the lame, and bring them to the building to get healed. Woo. They're not taught. They're not being perfected to go out and do the work of the ministry. Come on now. They're being perfected to bring, to, to do the work of the church. Mm. Yes. yes. Amen. Uh, I think one thing the bishop said to kind of like speak with me, when you realize you don't know what you're doing, you're more apt to ask somebody for direction. And I think when he, when, even when the, the example you just gave, it's, a, it's, a, it's an example of us thinking we know what we're doing. I remember when I went into the witness on the street and you go to somebody and say, are you saved? And that was the intro. And then that was the canned intro that we used Woo! continually. So we learned to do that, but it was not effective. Because we would say, yeah, and, and then you got nowhere else to go. It's up to somebody else asking the same question. You're like, are you saved? But that wasn't Christ's method of doing business. And isn't, I kind of say, is it Christ's method? Because we are the person that is actually orchestrating the show, the one who initiated it, lives inside of us and gives us direction as we go in real time. But we seek to get information and then, you know, put, use it to accomplish a task that we're not capable of doing because we don't have that kind of information flow in our heads. We can't handle that kind of information. But God is talking to us even as we go and walk, as we go through the day, as we're approaching other people concerning salvation. He's feeding information to us. Come on. We won't listen to that if we think we already know what we're doing. Yeah. So, the first so Elder, so Elder, are you telling me that we are far more traditional than we want to give ourselves credit for being? Oh, yeah, definitely so. Yeah. And I don't think we know, even when we're trying to be a little bit more, what's the word? Uh, uh, advanced or you know a little bit more forward thinking we have a tendency just inherently to slip back into that mode because initially in the flesh that's how we operated except soothsayers who knew they had to go to demons for information but we thought that we could learn something and go out and do it well we've been taught we've been taught seven steps a recipe nice. three, three 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 Thank stages yep. and so we, we we're built to be traditional and so i guess as I'm looking at things and listening to what you're saying, <clears throat> we're probably we're probably 95 percent of everything we do is by tradition. Yes, sir. You 98. Know, that was uh, uh, what you were saying, Jimmy, was was just stirring in my spirit before you even open your mouth. Uh huh. Uh, that we're not being taught who we are in Christ. Right. We're not being taught the full redemptive work that happened. God preach. When, when, when Christ died for our sins, not only died, but when he was resurrected. We're yeah. not taught what all that encompasses. Yeah. What we're being taught is disqualification of yeah. that. Minister, you know, just, yeah. we, we don't know who we are in Christ. And if you don't know who you are and somebody's trying to, if, if, if you are a king and someone's constantly telling you what you need to do to become a king, then you're not going to know that you're a king. You know, it's just like this right here. Last week, we played golf after church, and I was talking to the bishop. And I was just messing with him, talking about, uh, you know, how he has everything in life that he wants, all the toys, materialistic things. He said, no, I don't have everything. I said, what you don't have? And he, and he went back to the same scripture that was used today. He said, that I may know him. Mm -hmm. 
that I may know him. In the power, yes, sir. <laughs> and I mean that's that 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 should just be a hunger, just a thirst in us yes. that 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 drives us towards away from tradition and and, and closer to, to to the cross and those kind of things because of all that other stuff don't really mean that the man. It's it, it's boiled down to that I may know him. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's let, me, great let, me, can I my, let me share my screen with you. Can I share my screen with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm going to show you something. I don't know if y'all. Can you see this? This is uh. You already. He should be able to share. You, you put the share on there? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Not yet. You're not sharing. Mm -hmm. I, I was. Because I, I think you can share. I know. Some some people got an account can share anyway. There it is. It's coming, Bishop. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, let me see if I can open this up. Can you see that? We see two. You try yes, sir. Okay. What what is this? Because somebody tell me what the what the, what the topic says. The glory of become of the becoming. The glory of becoming. God uh, knew you. God knew there should be a K in there. Knew you. How yeah. God see you in Christ? No, no. It says the glory no. of becoming God's knew you. Yeah, he, you the knew you in Christ. Yes. This is the this is this is this is the you that God created in Christ. Amen. Okay. And the, the question is, see, this is how God sees you. But see, the question is, how do you see you? How you see yeah. it, right? And see, tradition has never taught you how yeah. you're supposed to see you. Amen. And if you start talking to folks, they'll tell you everything about them that's contrary to what God said. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Jesus started John 15 by saying something. In John 15, verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine. Thank you, Jesus. Now, why do why you think he just said I'm the true vine? Because there's a lot of different vines you can get on and never get on the right tree or get the or bring forth the right fruit. Because there's some false ones out there. Right. Right. And you can perceive that you're connected to the true vine when in fact you you're connected to a corrupt. It, 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 and I think it's Isaiah chapter five. God said, I planted a I planted a vineyard. I had the best vine. I had the best soil. Woo! I got all the rocks out. I Ooh. did everything you could do to get good grapes. Yes, and sir. It brought forth sour grapes. Woo! So Jesus shows up and said, Y'all were supposed to be the vine. Woo! <laughs> Y'all were supposed to give God what he wanted. Come on. But because you failed, he sent me. Woo! <laughs> I'm here to give God exactly what he wants. Come on now. And so what I found out is, you you can you you can think you're in the reality of God yes, when sir. in fact you're deceived and connected to something that's a cult. Woo! Mm -hmm. hey, hey, Bishop, Bishop, just just to throw this in there, I, God was telling me this one scripture. You know, we're back to Genesis. He he brought this up way back in Genesis chapter eleven. When those people said, let's go make a name for ourselves, let's build our own city, and God had to go down and, and scatter them, you know, because they were doing opposite of what he wanted. Amen. And that sounds exactly what, what we're talking about, Chris, even today. In other words, mm -hmm. you, you, because some of the, even like mega ministries or small ministries too, build a name for ourselves. And then the foundation is Jesus Christ. What church you go to? I go, I, I am the church. What do you mean what church I go to? I am the church. Jesus is the head. That's where I go to. That's what I dwell in. But we're taught where we go to. Let us make a name for our own selves. Yes, amen. You know what comes to mind? Uh, is uh Malcolm X. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. He always yeah. started out saying yeah. the Elijah, uh, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He never pointed to himself. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
And likewise, we should always, God says, Jesus Christ says, uh -huh. Uh -huh. God desires. Yes, sir. You know, it, it, and, 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 and like Malcolm X always pointed at who he thought was the, the, the source. Come on. We should be doing the same. It's just an example of what these mega churches has missed out on. You know what I'm saying? They, they, their, their, their name has become yeah. great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can, I can listen to, to, to people as just, just going through, through life itself, and. T.D. Jakes to come on, and he's got everybody's ear. T.D. Jakes said, yeah. you know what I'm saying? When, when, when your name becomes greater than the one that you're serving, you know, there, there's something's amiss. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Why, why you talk about Malcolm X, just on the phone now, you do realize that all of his life, Malcolm X thought that he was in the true Islam. Yes. Yes, sir. All of his life, he thought he was following the true thing. And then he found out it yes. was a cult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That Christmas. Uh, you know, you know, Bishop. I wanted to. I wanted to be better to say, Chris, are you saved? Opposed to the question is, are you the church? Are, are you the church, Brother Addison? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm a member of the body. You mm -hmm. said that. We, we're asking, are you saved? Say, are you the church? Yeah. Are you one yeah. of the people that, that, that know Jesus? <laughs> I just need to know. I need to know who I'm talking to. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we have to answer our question. I said this question. How has God ordained each of us to see ourselves in Christ? You, this is for you answer that question. Or right, continue on that. Let me let me share that this verse that goes with what we I think kind of leads to where you're coming from. Let let me share this. <laughs>